Y'all, it is a beautiful Lord's Day today. We're so glad to have a little sunshine. Y'all, we have a spe special speaker today. Uh, and there he goes. What's that? Uh, hey, get back here, DeRosa. <laughs> oh, okay. Close the door. Look, the guy is a Yankee. You got to forgive him. He's from Brooklyn, New York. Now, Joe has told us it was southern Brooklyn that he was from. He is an interesting guy. Um, he studied at Samford in the H Day program to be a preacher. Interesting. Okay. He has some interesting stories about that. But the thing that changed Joe's life was Trace Diaz about 18 years ago. Turning point. There's a lot to Joe. Okay. Please help me welcome a man who went through the Yankee to Southerner conversion program and survived, our own Joe Tarosa. Thank you, Russ. Oh, okay. There you go. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, Ephesians 4. No. Oh, you want me to talk louder? <laughs> I love you. <laughs> okay, uh, let's pray. I haven't started yet. Okay. Um, pray with me, please. Father, we praise you and worship you, and thank you so much that you hear us, that you know us. Thank you for making us, for loving us. Thank you, Jesus, for coming and saving us. Please today um, open our hearts and make us willing to know the truth about your word and what you have to say to us. And uh, thank you for this time together, in Jesus' name. Ephesians 4, uh, Paul says, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. And I'm immediately convicted, uh, as I guess we all are to some degree, some of us more than others, um, because I'm, I'm not very humble, uh, often not gentle. And then it goes on, be patient. I'm often not patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit. Um, they mentioned Tres Diaz, and yeah, it had a powerful effect on my life, but it, Trace Diaz isn't really a thing. What makes Trace Diaz powerful is people come together seeking God and spend three days doing it with a lot of prayer involved. So it's not Trace Diaz. It's you could just get 150 people anywhere that would be willing to spend three days with the Bible's open, seeking God, and it would be the same thing. It's immensely powerful. Because Trace Diaz is an interdenominational thing, um, there's people from all different Christian backgrounds, as well as all different socioeconomic and racial and every kind of, of difference. There'll be somebody from um, just got out of prison and he's covered with tattoos and the guy next to him maybe owns several companies, and um, there'll be a jump and shout in Pentecostal and a real prim and proper someone from another, I don't know where. But um, after a day or two, the unity that begins to develop in this group only because we just come together and open the Bible and seek God together. So. I didn't mean it to be a, I wouldn't have mentioned Trace Diaz just then, except he, he brought it up, and it reminded me that that's, that's really the place I've most seen this um, unity of the Spirit, um, because to be completely humble is so challenging. Even to be partly humble is challenging, and uh, be gentle and patient, and to bear with one another is challenging. 
Uh, in an environment like that, it's easier because everybody comes together for that purpose. Uh, here, you only have to be together for a little while and you can suck it up and, and then talk about me in the parking lot, you know, or whatever, or IU, you know, we can go our own ways. Uh, when you're forced together for that much time, it makes a difference uh, and makes it easier. But um, I brought this up because it, uh, it, it's when it gets to, and I shouldn't have printed the whole thing out because, or I should have underlined the one I was looking for because now I can't find the place I wanted to be. Um, ah, yeah. In 15, again, Ephesians 4. Um, well, 14. Then we won't be infants any longer, tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning craftiness of people and their deceitful scheming. And, and that image of being tossed back and forth by waves is also in, uh, is it James, uh, about praying for wisdom? And says, if you ask, um, ask in faith. Because um, if you don't have faith, you'll be like this one, tossed about, and it says not to expect you'll get anything from God. But here it says, instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, and that is Christ. And I, I wanted to bring that up because I have a confession to make, um, and that is uh, I'm lazy, and that's why we were talking about that when you... Um, and I've learned that as I seek God and um, pray more and um, confess more and uh, get together with other people seeking God and allow God to work in my life, I discover that it's very simple to speak the truth in love. We, we all have heard so much scripture over the years, those of us that have been around a while, and even if we haven't done a lot of deep study, we, we've absorbed so much of the word, so much truth. And um, in John 14, I think it says, the Spirit will remind us, is it 14? The Spirit will bring to our remembrance the, the truths that he taught us. So it's very easy to the subject. And the devil loves this too because he knows that once we've confessed to a brother or sister in Christ, that sin is much harder to commit because while he gives us great rationalizations in our mind to get us to postpone dealing with our sins, once it's out there, we can't continue to ignore it. Also, our brother will not only keep us accountable, but he will pray for us and help us to keep strong. Confession becomes easy once we get past fearing judgment. Jesus took the judgment of God away from us and the judgment of men has no weight except for whatever we give it in our minds. If we obey James 7 and judge righteous judgment, then we must judge ourselves to be righteous with the righteousness of Christ. Because of Jesus, we actually are righteous. Again, not our own righteousness but his has been credited to us, just as it was to Abraham when he believed God. Jesus took our sin on the cross and we received his righteousness. This is explained in Romans and simply stated in 2 Corinthians 5. He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Just like Abraham, we receive this by faith. Effective prayer requires faith. And James says you don't think you'll get anything from God if you waver in your faith. So when you pray, believe that you come to God as his beloved child, the apple of his eye, righteous in his sight because of the blood of Christ. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. James 5 says the prayer of the righteous has great power. If we confess our sins and believe God, our prayer will have great power. But knowing this doesn't make it happen. Believing it and doing it makes it happen. And I am proof 
it doesn't require a holy person, a godly man or deep student of the Bible or anything exceptional. Anybody can have effective prayer if you believe. So do it. Thanks.